Other than having a space where you can practice footwork and ideally blade work, probably the second most important part of your home training kit would be a mirror. Mirrors allow you to do a lot of things. I would argue they're fairly indispensable uh, for home practice, solo practice, uh, for fencing and martial arts. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, I have kind of an extreme example. I have a really big mirror here um, that I got when somebody in my neighborhood, they were remodeling their bathroom, they threw this away. So I got this for free. But it's basically a smaller version of the very large heavy windows, heavy, sorry, not windows, mirrors that you see in dance and martial arts studios all over the place. You don't have to do something like that. Uh, you can simply go down to your whatever store, whatever big box store or Ross or Marshalls or whatever you have in the area and just look for inexpensive closet mirrors like I have here. They're probably about four or so feet tall, maybe five feet tall. That's enough. You can buy one or two of those, put them up. Not that expensive, easy to find. Uh, so what do you use a mirror for? You can do a lot of things with a mirror. So, ranging from checking your guard, checking your footwork, uh, looking at your lunges, all sorts of things you can do with a mirror. Let's start with the very basics. So let's get an iron guard. Now, I would copy out this and say, depending upon the style that you're doing, your guard might look a little bit different. I'll give you, as most as I can, sort of a very generic 19th century Italian guard. If you're doing French small sword, Italian rapier, other types of British saber, whatever, your guard is going to a little bit, look a little bit different. Um, so just keep that in mind. So for us, right, what you're going to do is start off from first position with your feet in a 90 degree check. You're going to bring that front foot up and you're bring it up about a foot and a half to two of your own foot lengths. Uh, then once it's here, you're going to bend your knees and the turnout comes from the hips, right? So the turnout's not from the feet with the knees sort of drifting in. The turnout's from the hips, very broad, very deep, with the feet at about a 90 degree or, 100 de or even a 100 degree angle, depending on your source. If you're doing more um, French small sword, you know, it might be totally rear, late, rear weighted with the rear foot coming in, depending upon the source. For us, the weight is 50-50 uh, for late 18th, 19th century Italian fencing. Weight is 50-50, knees going out 90 degrees. Um, from here, you can, you can watch how your guard looks in the mirror. Now, once you start moving, it's a bad habit to be looking at your feet. Looking at your feet while you're doing footwork throws off your balance and will make your footwork different. Time to time to go down and check when you're static, that's fine. But the mirror allows you to look at all of this, basically in the mirror, and check without having to change your, your center of gravity as you, as you look around with your head. I can look at myself on the side. I can make sure that my turnout is good. I can make sure that my front hip is slightly lower than my rear hip. That's important in the particular style of fencing that I do. And I'm making sure, again, that my front toe is not drifting in. My rear knee is not drifting in. It's back over the foot. And I've got my nice uh, guard here. Um, I can check this all the time as much as I'd like in the mirror. I can also check my upper body. So let's just say I'm going to go for sort of a 19th century foil sort of on guard. I'm going to have my rear arm up in the sort of scorpion tail. I'm going to have my right arm out. I relatively relaxed, but I can check things, right? I can check to make sure that I don't have a break between the hand and my wrist. I'm not doing this sort of a thing. That's quite common that you see people do. I'm not having my rear arm drift down. I'm not having it drift. I'm not letting my upper, my, my upper arm kind of collapse in, I'm making sure there's always at least a fist or more. Again, it will depend on the style, right? So even in 19th century time fencing, whether I'm doing early 19th century sort of Rosarol and Grisetti, I'm doing something later like Barbacetti or whatever, your, your guard position will be different. The main thing is that you yourself fix what your guard position is and you check it in the mirror. Once I have my guard somewhere where I want it, I can check my footwork. So the simple advance, simple advance, simple retreat, simple retreat. And I can check things. Are my feet getting too close together? as I do this, right? That should not happen. I should keep the same speed. I shouldn't have to get my feet together unless I'm doing some sort of tactical footwork. But we're just talking basic footwork. I want the same space roughly between my feet while I do footwork. 
Similarly, I can check to see if I'm straightening my legs. Very common, I get tired, I start standing upright. Most of these styles are an easier bet. Again, there's exceptions if you do certain forms of Spanish rapier or something where you're more upright. But again, for what, what we're sort of talking about here, we want the knees bent. This is particularly true when we're doing cross-stepping. We want to make sure that we stay nice and low with the knees bent as we cross-step, that we don't raise up as we cross-step. We want to keep the same position, whatever I'm doing. I can also check things like my lunge, common falls for the lunge, so I can see in the mirror, making sure that I'm starting with the hand, my hand's going up first, I run an arm, I do the lunge, I recover, last thing I do is I drop the arm. A couple of things here as I'm doing the lunge, I want to make sure that I lead with the hand with the weapon, and the hand and the weapon pulls me along. So I don't want to do this at the same time, I don't want to have sort of this happening. I also want to make sure that I'm not doing even worse, like some sort of delayed punch sort of thing. I also want to make sure that my rear arm, right, is tracking with the action. That it's not something like this, right, that I'm actually blending these movements together. A couple of other common things, looking at my front toe. So I'm not doing this with my front toe, Moving in, generally speaking, a nice conservative generic lunge is what I should practice. Um, you don't want to over lunge. There's different ways to lunge, ranging from a relatively modest, you know, sort of lunge all the way to very explosive, long Olympic fencing lunge. I would just say from the beginning, as you practice, get a nice balanced generic lunge. You can do stuff to it later. You can tune it to be more like Capoeira, more like Latouche, more like Parise, more like the South Korean Olympic fencing team. Whatever you want to do right now, uh, I would say do it generic, then you can add to it later on. Um, so again, watching myself in the mirror, and first, back, and then there, lastly, I relax the arm. Um, so those are ways that you can get instant feedback using the mirror. I find it an invaluable piece of my training kit.